The only known recording of the actual gunshots uh, was this recording made by Mr. Przinsky, and which is somewhat ironic in that Przinsky was not aware at the time he made the recording that he in fact was still recording. He had set up his microphone and his cassette recorder up at the podium area, had recorded Kennedy's victory statement. And after that had concluded, he came back up to the podium, collecting his microphone and his recorder. And as he was descending the stairs is the point at which the shooting began. He continued to walk into the entryway to the pantry as the shots continued. This is a poor recording, and, and that's unfortunate. I mean, it would have been lovely if this had been a high-quality recording made with professional equipment right on the scene and uh, as it was happening in the kitchen pantry, but it's not. So we have to make do with what we have. Over this period of the last three years, what I found was basically three different discoveries. Uh, the first discovery was 13 shot sounds over a little bit over a five-second uh, interval of time. There are two shots and then a pause of about one and a third seconds and then a flurry of succeeding shots then a number of screams and shouts from that pantry area. Let's just look at part of the shot sequence right up to the scream. The second discovery was that within those 13 shot sounds, there are two instances of what I call double shots. And those are two shots that occur so close together as to make it really very difficult to believe how they could have possibly come from a single gun. And in fact, last year when the Discovery Times Channel hired a gun expert in California, rented a, an Ivor Johnson Cadet 55, which was the weapon that Sirhan had used, and had him under ideal conditions try to shoot it as fast as he could. And I guess the fastest eight shot average was something like 366 milliseconds between shots. One of the double shots that I found was about 120, 122 milliseconds apart. The other was about 147, 148 milliseconds apart. So about three times faster than a gun expert, firing expert, was able to achieve under ideal conditions. And we must remember that at the time that the double shots occurred, Sirhan's gun wrist had been pinned down onto the steam table. If we consider the possibility of two guns being fired by two different individuals, then we could say that over that same period of time, we would have a random distribution in terms of the occurrence of the shots from those two guns and the likelihood that we would have a couple of virtually overlapping shots occurring from those two guns. And that's in fact what we see in these two double shot occurrences. As we analyzed further and further, we found a, a similarity pretty much across the board amongst all of those shot sounds. However, we found one anomaly with five of the gunshots. One frequency presented at a higher level at 1600 hertz at one particular frequency. At a total loss for what that possibly could be coming from. We did an independent firing range test using two different guns, an Ivor Johnson Cadet 55, the same that Sir Han had used. The other one was an H&R 922, the security guard, who was positioned immediately behind Kennedy, uh, in fact had Kennedy's right elbow with his left hand at the time, uh, and was carrying a gun that evening happened to own an H&R 922 at the time of the shooting. That particular model gun has the same rifling characteristics as the Ivor Johnson Cadet 55. The security guard sold that particular weapon a few months after the shooting and not 
prior to the shooting as he had initially indicated to the police. So anyway, that seemed to be a good second gun to be using for this, for this independent uh, firing range test. The results of that test uh, showed the same frequency anomaly that we had found in the Pruszynski recording. With the H&R 922 as measured from behind, we found the same frequency anomaly, in other words, this, this abnormally high level at 1600 hertz, we did not notice any resonance characteristics within the frequency bands with the Ivor Johnson. This provided very, very strong evidence then that the uh, source of the, the second gun was in fact an H&R 922 uh, and that that was fired in that kitchen pantry at the same time that uh, Sir Han's Ivor Johnson Cadet 55 was fired. They were able to find uh, 10 shot sounds and one of the double shots, the more prominent of the two double shot occurrences. Had they had more time, I have no doubt that they would have found the others. But what's most important there, rather than to any quibbling that may go on in terms of, well, is it really 10 shots or 12 shots or 14 shots or whatever, the primary point that people need to recall is that the capacity of Sirhan's gun was eight shots. He did not have time to reload. And so anything more than eight shots proves there had to be a second gun firing within that kitchen pantry, period. My instrumentation, as good as it is, doesn't spew out a name, okay? So all I have is, is my scientific findings. All I can say is there absolutely had to have been more than one gun involved. Sirhan Sirhan could not have shot Robert Kennedy certainly could not have fired the fatal bullet. And we have 12 witnesses basically that put him two to three to four to five to six feet from Kennedy. So what does that mean? It means that Sirhan was convicted for a crime which he did not commit. So it is the responsibility of the judicial system, the criminal justice system, to rectify that error.